come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Seamless. <laughs> Seamless. You don't know what you're talking about, Sean. You know what I should have done? I should have started the timer. Uh, that's why you can start now. If this is your first rodeo, we're a weekly uh, movie review podcast that comes your way Indeed. every Saturday night, uh, whether you're ready for it or not. Uh, hey, wherever you found us, please do us a favor. Go on over and uh, give us a like, a star rating. Give us a review. Yeah, write some words about us. That'd be nice. And hit subscribe. Yeah, do that too. Because all of that stuff helps us get found by other folks like you. And uh, we know how much that means to you. Uh, we do, because, you know, you like us and <laughs> other people like us. So we want other other people to like us. We go. just want to be liked. Uh, you can follow along for the time of your life on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Who are these people who are talking to you right now? The internet <laughs> radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. It's always a little bit added in there. Holly's on assignment tonight. Holly's on assignment um, to live. Yes. <laughs> yes. Her assignment basically. is her, to her live. Her assignment yeah. is to live yeah. at this point. Yeah. So She'll be joining she's us doing well. next week. So uh, She's getting thetans removed from her body. She, she's working on going clear. Going that's clear. That's what she's doing. Yeah. So, You're getting thetans removed? Yeah, that's what uh-huh. it is in Scientology. I didn't watch that documentary. That to, yeah, no, she's working on going clear. Okay. So, guys, when she comes I back. I know, I know. I wanted to. I'm like, I, I, I don't. When she I, comes my back. My HBO subscription <laughs> went, went, went away before I could watch it. Yeah. When she comes back, she can enlighten us all on how we can go clear. So, oh, no. we'll have an in now. No, we have an in so, now. So, yeah. get ready for the money to roll. We're only right? so many Oh, we're going to get sponsored. Do we automatically get sponsored if we're part of Scientology? I think so. Yeah, and at some point oh, you awesome. get to meet Tom Cruise, right? And, and learn about Xenu, right? Can we have yeah. him as a guest? Do we care about Xenu? It's Tom Cruise you want to get. That's to. really yeah. He's where I'm the going. god. Of He's my Xenu. Yeah. Not so, John Travolta. Don't care about him. No. 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 <laughs> He's like a saint. I mean, he'd be all right. Yeah. He's, <laughs> He's on. He's on like uh, uh, Mount Rushmore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he was there cool. first. Yeah, that's very he true. was there long before anyone that's else, so he should be so the first. So head he's on the Mount George Rushmore. Washington yes, exactly. head. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I off mic, Sean. We should really figure out. We should really Mount figure Rushmore out the Mount Rushmore of Scientology. Of Scientology. <laughs> I was just thinking that. I'm like, well, if he's up there, who else? I is was there? like, damn, I kind of want to Photoshop so this. Definitely, <laughs> but Tom Cruise uh, is also up there. Isaac yeah. Hayes, probably L. Ron Hubbard. Obviously, he's got sure. All right. Although I couldn't pick him out of a crowd. No, I wouldn't be able to know. You'd be like, okay, you'd be like, who's that doughy guy with those movie stars? I'll give you a dollar if you can name the four that are up there now on the uh, Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Is it Washington Jefferson? I think Franklin is yeah, up there, right? Is, is up Franklin there, yeah. up there? That's the I one I don't so. know. Okay. And Adam? No, come on. I don't know. I've seen Mount Rushmore and I don't know. Is it Lincoln? It's is Lincoln. Lincoln? Yeah, I was just saying Lincoln's the other one. Lincoln. Say, I'm like, you guys are making me wonder if that's true. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's Lincoln. Yeah. But I'm like, he's got a memorial. Is he Yay on Mount Rushmore? American no, education. It's, yeah, it's Lincoln. <laughs> It's been a long time since <laughs> I've been in. Okay, so <laughs> movies. Anyways, right. we watched a movie tonight Luke that was Wilson, chosen who's by on No Mountain. Who was the movie chosen by? Michaela. What did like you I choose? Just did this, Michaela. What did you choose for tonight? We watched Vacancy from 2007. Ooh, directed by Nimrod Antal, mm-hmm. who we would know from the Best Predator sequel, Predators. Ah, Heresy. It's a lie. Heresy. It's a lie. Heresy. It's a lie. Predator Two. I stand, Predator Two I stand is by it. still the. Best one after Predator. What'd you say? Which one? Predator Two. Predator Two is still yeah. the best one after Predator. Um, Nimrod and Tal. Did he do anything else? He uh, he's done something else. Some did he do something for else for? Uh, he, Robert you know Rodriguez? that, you know that weird, um, oh, Matt oh. Dillon, uh, M Night Shyamalan TV show, Wayward Pines. He yeah. directed oh, yeah. episodes of that. Okay. Oh, nice. Um, but uh, beyond that, like, like. That was kind of it. Predators was, hmm. was kind of it. The really? Director. Did some TV. Let's, let's look at did, director. Way before this, he did Control. That was like the thing that really got uh, noticed. Yeah, okay. so. right. yeah. They needed vacancy. Mm-hmm. Armored. You guys remember Armored? Nope. nope. Oh, I remember that the shit out of that one. I, know, I never want to take never, down an armored truck or something. But yeah, I, can't I, know, tell I, don't, I never saw the movie. I remember yeah. the trailers nope. and they yeah. promoted the don't shit out of that movie. So he got Armored and then he did Predators. Oh, he did Metallica Through the Never. Cool. Okay. Good for him. In 3D with Dane DeHaan. Mm-hmm. And IMAX. God. And Wayward Pines. Mm-hmm. And that's about it, right? And the Whiskey Bandit. Nope. Which is, a, it looks like a foreign film because on the poster it's called uh, Aviskis. 
<laughs> well, maybe he All retreated. Right. And we drink the aviskis. Which is too, yeah. which is too bad because I think he's like, I don't know if he's a good director, but he's a perfectly competent, workable director, I right. think. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, he's a work. He's yeah. a yeoman like job. A guy, yeah. It feels yeah. like he came done. out of a film school somewhere. You know, right. Yeah, if he's got a good producer together. behind him, then he mm-hmm. can oh, like accomplish some shit. I think he does well For with sure. that. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's perfectly capable. Mm-hmm. So this movie came out of the 2007s. Yes. Yes, which is a, a pretty good year it's for movies. It's a great year for it's movies. A pretty good year I did some movies. research on it before with this episode because I was like, well, I know we talk about that a lot. And the more I research, the more we are right about that. Like, yeah. the, the, it doesn't matter how deep you dig into like independent movies that year, almost all good. Like almost all good. It's now a I'm great just going to mention the the best one. Zodiac. Came yeah, out the, obviously, it's obviously, <laughs> yes. which is the best movie of 2007. Yeah. So there you go. There's that. But it was yeah. a good year for movies. Yeah, it was a great year. I enjoyed it. Um, but it also came from the. How do you get a name like? Is Nimrod? it the uh, second golden age of uh, horror? Absolutely. The 2000s. Absolutely. Colin and I were talking off mic uh, before we started recording, but so I had a hypothesis about this movie going in. Mm. I thought this movie was just released at the wrong time. I thought that was the, this movie's biggest problem because my kind of thought was okay, we're like coming off the tail end of like torture porn, starting to die down at this point, right? Right. When was when did Saw come out? The oh, first one was five. Oh five. Okay. Right. The, the first one was earlier than that. I thought because well, the fourth Saw, the fourth one is out in two thousand this came year. Saw first though. Saw was right, but two, Saw four is out in two thousand seven, the same year this comes yeah, out. Saw came out like that. Feels like two thousand three. Two thousand four. Yeah. Okay. That was for Saw, and and when Saw came out. For those next like two three years, it was like tortured. Like that genre was, was like it. big. That was that was it. all there was for it's horror. All there like. was. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we're on the we're on the tail end of that, right? Okay. So my kind of thought is like, well, this movie just came out at tor- like this is a suspenseful movie, so it didn't do well because it came out in torture porn, right? Okay. I did some research on horror movies that came out in two thousand seven. Mm. I was wrong. Two thousand seven was a year that they were taking shots at every genre of horror. Hoping nice. something would stick and become the next torture porn what trend, do we got? right? Okay, I'm here's curious. just some of the highlights of 2007 for horror alone: Zodiac, Funny Games, uh. Inside, Trick or Treat, Paranormal Activity, The Mist, The Orphanage, <laughs> I Am Legend, The Reaping, The Messengers, Wreck, 28 Weeks Later, 30 Days of Night, Rogue, Primeval. We had two alligator killer movies that year, same year, <laughs> and the Hitcher remake. Almost that's all a, of those are original movies too. That's a pretty when the fuck fucking was Dawn of the Dead? Then was that not that was a uh, oh four? Oh, four, yeah. maybe. Was it? I feel like it was yeah, four. Yeah, like, it was, I, the remake craze was also happening here this time. Right, but this year is <laughs> surprisingly diverse. Like, That's I cannot a believe. a really good list of movies. They're, like, the studios were literally just, like, just trying everything, hoping to catch whatever was going to be the next trend. And it's funny that they're, like, they're trying everything here. You know, like I said, they're trying Stephen King adaptations with The Mist. They're trying, like, you know. We um, get, the ne- we get Paranormal Activity, which branches off into say, its own big But thing. then Paranormal Activity busts through the fucking saloon doors and says, get out, bitches. <laughs> and then that becomes the next trend. Like, the studios yeah. are throwing all the money at these big movies. And this fucking $25,000 indie picture comes in and just says, fuck y'all. And well, completely be, changes course. Well, Saw had done that beforehand, right? Yeah. Because yeah. Saw was... Uh, I think one of those movies that was made for like three million and made mm-hmm. like a hundred and something, and they're yeah. like, "This yep. is how you make movies. You barely mm-hmm. put any." I mean, Jason Blum got his ideas, I think, off of I think the so, success yeah. of those. But I mean, this time in horror, you know, like the, the the amount of stuff that was coming out in the '90s, and we were talking off mic. It's mm-hmm. like to me, it started in '99, right? Mm-hmm. Like because mm-hmm. the '90s. I mean, I've said it before. It was shit for horror. Like after the '80s, like it went to crap. Yeah, and then. 99 with Blair Witch and uh, and uh, uh, Stir of Echoes and oh, Sixth yes, Sense Echoes. and, you know, that kind of stuff. And it started it until you got to The Ring and then you got to the, the J-horror right. stuff. Was all and happening. that was a big thing. The French extremism was mm-hmm. all starting to take place True. in that era. And yeah, then and Hollywood this is like, was like caught the wave of like, we got to compete with them to do horror. and yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a really weird like tipping point in 2007 because like I said, the torture porn slowing down. French extremism is about to take off really sharply, but then also die off really quickly. Well, when, yeah. was, when was High Tension, though? That was earlier, That's right? right? Uh, the- high Tension, I think, was 2006. And then I think so. I Let me thought, double check that. I would have pegged yeah, that for like 03 or something. I was going to say 05. Um, but Funny Games was this year. And that, and it's te- te- not technically a French extremist film, but it's considered very part You're of that genre. The remake, the remake of Funny was Games high was this tension. year. Yeah, 03, because 03 was Inside like, was this year, too. Well, Inside was, was 2007. So. Uh, and Devil's Rejects was like 05, right? Mm-hmm. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake that kicked off the remakes, was like 03. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Juwan and all mm-hmm. that. It's like all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
this is an interesting time. It in is. Horror Very. When, when they got like really brutal, I think all that's a response to like uh, the nineties not no, being brutal. I it think was like that whole September 11th thing. It was a response the, to like finding out all the torturing we did of people yeah, at Abu Ghraib, uh, I think. And the, Islam, the beheadings <laughs> Guantanamo, of people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, hostile, basically. Like, we have to, to keep up with the news, they, yeah. basically. Is, well, there was. So thought. it's like, I mean, as movies are a, kind a, reflection, of a reflection, reflection of the of period, time, yeah, yeah. There we are at the time. I guess yeah. that's where your headspace was. Right. Oh, if we're we going to be really horrified, we need to keep up with the news. I mean, like, that is, like, this is where we're at. This is the level. Of the world right now. I think it's a comparison thing. So our thing. movies need to reflect that. Yeah. I think it's a comparison thing too, where it's like, uh, like wow, real world's really horrible, and mm-hmm. like you go watch a movie, and you're like, well, at least it's not that bad, right. sort of thing. You know? like, <laughs> but it's that boot camp for the psyche thing. Like yeah, I don't want to exactly. see Daniel Pearl right. get beheaded, but like for some reason, I'll go see uh, somebody strap a big contraption onto a guy's right. head that'll rip that'll his rip jaws his off. Well, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. That's why we watch horror movies because we're just like, the horrors, we need to be prepared for the horrors of the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I need to see it fantastically done to be like, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. there it is. I've seen it. I'm prepared. And now I'm desensitized for the rest of the <laughs> shit that goes on so I can deal with my life and no, not go nuts. But why not only it- like fantastically done, but also usually devoid of context. You know, mm. like horror movies have like minimal context you know what i'm saying like it's not couched in all of this like political conflict usually at least not in this time mm. i would say i think now it's different well but, no, but I mean, it's always I, yeah, it's, it's horror's always, always it's, political but it's it feels always, like it's like subconsciously but it's not always at like the overt. forefront yeah it's, it's not, not overt, always, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah now it is i feel like now it's almost always over like the the hunt or the right, yeah, yeah exactly. no, we're yeah, we are we're more over in the face but with the themes. That's the thing, yeah. like we have lost, I think, in some ways, the ability <laughs> to do like subtlety. Like, there's the new uh, what's his name, Taika Waititi movie about Hitler, Taika jo- Waititi, yeah. yeah, Jojo Rabbit, Jojo Rabbit yeah. and like they have to say in the the ads, like it's a satire. Like we wouldn't get that otherwise. Yeah. Like you gotta, you gotta be bl- uh, blunt. And right. There are dumb people out there. So right. well, I mean, we're also you know? getting to the point where we're just like, ah, we're not. We might. We're getting. Uh, this might offend viewers of Disney. I'm just like, ah, are, Dis- are Disney viewers Nazis? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, we're really just like, we gotta explain things to everybody yeah, at yeah. this point. Like, yeah, you don't understand. Well, here's but I think, thing. and that's the thing too. It's like so. Once we moved out of, uh, you know, I mean, like the the paranormal activity movie did obviously start up the it whole was a found disruptor fuvri, found footage uh, genre, yeah. but also the ghost movie. And like, have we talked about this before? Like, what is the ghost movie? Like, we've been stuck in that still to this day. The Annabelle movies, we'll are never Curse shake of it. La Llorona, you know, just came out yeah. this year. Like, what? It's the uh, but. But I don't somehow know. instead I think of now nobody's going to see them. But people used to go. I guess this is the thing. Like the the other movies were about kind of misadventure. You went out and something happened, and then right. it's like no, now we all retreat to our homes. Nobody right. leaves, and now home. it's coming so for now you. The ghost comes yes. into the home. Right, you know, the home all it's, home invasion. It's movies all yeah, you're everyone. right. It's all yep. home invasion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, trying to like where's the safe place? It's not safe anymore. Yeah, it's not safe anywhere. Right. and then it used to be the home. At least you could move, but not after Insidious. Now the thing is like right. Well, look at the world. Oh, paranormal activity too. Yeah, they said that it's, it's her. It's not the house. Yeah, but look at the world that's reflecting right now because we're. Uh, uh, I mean, everyone's afraid of like outside invaders, quote unquote, at this point, and so they think everyone thinks they're safe. And at least I have my home. I'm safe in my home. And so what do we do? Oh, we fucking horror, invade yeah. your fucking home yeah. with ghosts. Actual killers, what have you, but that is the thing. Yeah. Like, we're coming Even into your home. Even the new Halloween had a little bit safe. of that. He's yeah. Home, well, oh, yeah. I guess he's always been a home invader. He's always been a home invader. That's he's always why, been walking the streets yeah. of your neighborhood. But maybe wh- that's why a Halloween sequel at this point in time can actually be like a mainstream release, is because yeah. it taps into that same. Right. Uh, there is. Right. Well, you know, that anxiety. is. Anxiety. Right. There is that. There are certain anxieties that I think are uh, constant. Mm-hmm. And to have someone who's just walking in your neighborhood who could just walk into your house and mm-hmm. kill you will always be a thing. Yeah. That's, that's why a- The Strangers is one of the scariest movies ever made. I mean, that's yeah. uh, true. It's, it's just it's, it's disconcerting. <laughs> you know, when you way. picked Vacancy, actually, like uh, The Strangers is the first thing that came to mind. Mm-hmm. What year was that? I believe that was, I want to say 2005. I'm going to double check real quick, though. Yeah, because okay. it took a long time for them to make a Which, sequel to that Strangely, movie. yeah, yeah that actually, Strangers Pray at Night, not a bad movie. Wait, so who's in you. that? It's not uh, Luke Nobody. Wilson. Nobody, I don't know. No, the lead guy is, uh, I'm blanking on it. The Strangers it, was 2008. It was after this, actually. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Yeah, but there was a... Uh, there's a French movie called Them, which is extremely st- similar to The Strangers in some ways that mm. I think came out like either around the same time or like a year before. I mean, this is in the zeitgeist Scott at this point in time. 
Scott Speedman. Scott Speedman. That's, Thank you. That's yeah. It. yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Scott Speedman. That's no, no, no. And he's Liv in Tyler. The first he's one. in the first one. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the first and one. And Glenn Howerton yeah. is in the first one, too, from It's Always Is Sunny. it Glenn Howerton in the first yeah. one? Yeah. Oh. He's the brother that could skip I ahead. If you, ha- oh, you haven't <laughs> seen The Strangers? No, no, in a while is what I meant. To, if you haven't seen The Strangers, hit your 30 second head butt ramp. Sure. He's the brother that gets shot in the head. I don't remember that. I haven't it, seen that this like movie a major in a point I haven't of that seen movie. that movie in a long time. I don't time. remember that. Oh I don't remember okay, that. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, you can stop skipping now. So, Vacancy, right, yes. also plays into another. Is this a sub Who's in Vacancy? We haven't even said at this point. Kate Beckinsale and Luke Wilson. And Celine Frank Whaley. Whaley. Celine from the Underworld movies. I love her. Yes. You do love her. You got a, <laughs> thing, you got a thing for I that. I think she's good. I like it's, her. It's just like Underworld Resident Evil. That's where Colin mm-hmm. lives in his... No matter how bad they are, you still keep seeing them. That's right. You will keep seeing them. Yep, and they're terrible. But I go to see them every yeah, time. Yeah, I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen a one. I of think they're those, done now. The oh, yeah, really? No, okay. I've okay. I've not I've okay. not from front what? to back, I've not seen another one. Alright, so movie. there you go. We have found my critters too, or whatever the <laughs> fuck we're like, yeah, I've seen every underworld movie. There you go. All right. That's fair. Um, fair enough. <laughs> the, and Resident Evil. Those are the um, uh, yeah. Yeah, so this uh this also has is there well a subgenre of a subgenre, the motel movie. I think so. The motel. What are the movie? other ones? Psycho. Psycho. Okay. Motel hell. I don't think that counts. Uh, I don't think that counts. Is, is that a it's farm a movie? Different. It's more is that of a, a gardening it's, movie. It's more of a butcher and farm movie than it is what about, a motel. Yeah, because nobody ever ends Identity. up in a room in that exactly. movie. Exactly. Yeah. Identity. Identity. Identity is definitely yeah. a hotel movie. Uh, the Devil's Rejects. That feels like a hotel movie. Sort of. Joyride. Rubber. Does rubber. rubber, rubber, that kind of feels kind like a of. hotel movie. Wait, but is that from 2007 or whatever? I mean, no. like Devil's that's Rejects is like 05. Uh, but the, I think Devil's Rejects get, gets into that. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of movies in this time. But there's always like that thing where just like, like, oh, we broke down. We have to go to this fucking yeah. strange hotel. The Hitcher. Mm-hmm. They remade the that. Right? Joyride. Like, yeah, well, you were talking Bean. about earlier. Joyride. Sean Bean is the Hitcher in the remake. Yeah. He is. Yes. Even I watched it. But it came out like 06, something like that. That was the same year, 07. Okay. It's on my list. Yeah. It's on my list because I was like something about like being there was out like in concentration the of these movies, yeah. motel horrors, and it's always like the like the desert too. You yeah. know? Always, like, always. It's always There's the never desert. driving through Illinois. Yeah, be like, I need to stop fields. this <laughs> motel six yeah. and just hang out. You always have to feel desolate in a and right. Alone. Well, yeah, you have to be uh, you have to be cut off from the rest but, like, of the corn world. Cornfields are scary too. You they know? are. In fact, because you don't know say, what's in them. I would say more so because if you so can just too. see for distances, I'm like, well, I can see that dude coming with a knife. Yeah. He's, he's over there in the cornfield. Well, the cornfield like, got anything nothing. Can be. It, well, and we all, as we all know, uh, being people who live near cornfields, is that like. When, once the we're corn, in a cornfield right now. We're, I don't know if you know this. we're live from a cornfield. We're live from a cornfield. <laughs> um, when you get to like when the corn gets to a certain height and you pull up to intersections, you cannot see around it, and you're yeah. just pulling onto an intersection blind, hoping oh, yeah. you're going to make it. And if a deer comes out when you're driving down with this like high corn on both sides, good luck. Yeah, good no. luck. Man. Oh yeah, we take our yeah. lives in our own hands. You a can lot. see yeah. like where the deer have come out when yep. you're driving by yeah. those because they're like the corn stalks are always like uh, down mm-hmm. in the road. And you're like. Huh. I know now it sounds like we're out in the country, but there's country basically surrounding us. Yeah. As soon as it, you I'm, go, like, uh, yeah, it's, right outside. Again, yeah, it's Illinois. Like, if I walk 20 feet, I'm going to be like, oh, <laughs> shit, I could pluck a corn. I mean, to, I mean, we live in a city and there's cornfields within our city lo- right. property. So, yeah, know. people clear Which their backyards and, yeah. w- and grow yeah. corn. Yeah. There's like certain little pockets here and there. It was like, huh. There's there like are a Colin, block of corn. Colin, there are wild turkeys outside your yard yeah. right now. They kind of run this neighborhood. Yeah, well, they, they're they, always around here. They're oh. always there's like and there's like it's like thirty of them. There's a are lot, a lot, and they're, they're they, I've they hit freak them me out a little bit. Almost many times. I have not hit them. Almost hit them many that times. Like that was almost a confession. That was almost a confession. <laughs> I was gonna say, why is there twenty? I've been this driving week? in traffic a lot and been like turkey, turkey, turkey. Yeah. So, so they're around. So we can see the so other vacancy. the other subgenre. Which there are no turkeys. Well, yeah. the idea that uh, so this is what this also plays into is probably probably part of the thing. At that time, obviously, Saw is a big part of this. But the idea is that there are sadistic people out there, right? Mm. They look like normal people to you and me. Yep. But what they really want to do is play a game, yep. a sadistic fucking game with uh, you, right? This is mm-hmm. the horror of these movies that you are going to have your freedoms taken away from you uh, by somebody who locks you in a fucking room and then has their way with you in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> Right, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather it's fucking awful. Die. Yeah, it is. Uh, but this is yikes. this is the anxiety that I'm talking yeah. about. This, this is, this is, is why you make time. a movie like yep. this. Yeah, 
But it this, works on me. It yeah. usually comes from that uh, point of because uh, I always wonder if this is like a hand down somehow of like Hannibal Lecter, the the intelligent uh, uh, villain who has figured out like every when you when you think of something a way to escape, they've already thought of that. You want to go out the window? They already they know you're going to be out the window, and that's where they're waiting for you. I think this is a more. I think it's a, a simpler setting that they're put in because there's not. I don't find them that intelligent. Yes, they figured out that they can do this. Well, I'm but saying I don't as a genre, they're... this movie maybe sure. is aware of this, these yeah. tropes, and playing with them. Okay. I think so. I, I think that like in the world of this movie, these characters have nothing but time to, nothing to but time. think about how to do this. Nothing and but time. And you can, like, as Luke Wilson points out, like they've learned from the previous mistakes. So they keep getting better the more they do it. Yeah. All right, so what's the setup within of this their, movie? Within what are we talking about? There's still tunnels yeah. under, under um, the Luke and Wilson shit. and Kate Beckinsale are a separated couple coming back from her parents' wedding anniversary, yeah. which apparently was a really long drive because they said they've been driving for three hours and still had a ways to go. Yikes. This, yeah, that's way that's too long. I'd be like, fly. Good job, Just Mom and Dad. Fly. <laughs> this is me calling you saying congratulations. I'll I'm not driving you. four hours <laughs> yeah. to yeah. do this. And they or are, if not, we're flying. They're dysfunctional yeah. because they have lost a child. This mm-hmm. is some kind child. of a character, a little sprinkling of seasoning, because yes. it really doesn't matter at all. Well, it's something that divides them, right? Because right? she feels guilty about it and blames herself. And uh, right. like Sh- it's something that's that keeping up. them apart. Yeah, it's a wedge between them. Yes. So um, they, they almost hit a raccoon. They pull over to get it fixed at a gas station. Ethan Embry offers to fix it, says it's just a bent fan and they should be fine. Gives them some sketchy directions. They end up breaking down again. All right, let's get back to the sketchy directions. Because based on what he tells them, I'd be like, all right, what is the city you said? I could just go 20 miles this way and hit? (laughs) Because that's bullshit. I'm just like, I I would not be able to find whatever you said. Like, go down here till you hit a a, a grove of trees. Where are you right now? You're going to be able to, oh, that's a grove. You go on this road and you keep going. And then when you hit this, you turn right. And then then when you hit that, when you turn left. No, fuck that. No, this is what navigation was like before GPS. In 2007. In 2007. They didn't, they had the Tom Tom. Like the the separate device. Yeah. 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 But it worked. Yeah. (laughs) The, what was the other one? It was the Tom Tom and the Giffen or Griffin. Was it? Yeah. The Giffen. Uh, Garvin, the Garvin. You, yes, there you, you go. remember when people thought it was like the coolest thing where you could pay to get, have like Hulk Hogan or like Stallone oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah, Darth yeah. Vader. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And you got uh, you got Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah. I think I had that one. And if you took her on turn, Darth Vader went no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're joking. <laughs> I am. <laughs> if I remember, I, I, I made that joke <laughs> eight years ago to someone. So I was just. Oh, I'm glad you've been hanging out. on to it. Yeah, I know. I've been hanging on to that one because that's a good joke. Oh. <laughs> Reliving the darkest moment uh, of my yes. uh, later years. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Ethan Embry basically, because this is the thing. Like when you go, we've seen enough of these movies. Yep. That we know that dude's up to shady shit. He's like, yeah, yeah I'll fix your car, but he's actually fucking the car up. Yeah. Because you're not going very far, and you're gonna have to like car's gonna break down. And you're gonna have to walk yeah. back. No, we know what's gonna happen. Yeah. So uh, they have to come back and to the the because it's a gas station and a, ho- a motel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Run by. Frank Wally, right? Whaley. Whaley? Wally? Well, all right. I've always said Whaley. Yeah. The star of The Doors. The star of Swimming with Sharks. Oh, yeah. I saw that movie. It's with a good movie. Uh, Kevin Spacey. You, the Nightmare. The, That's like you well, never yeah. want to actually get God into the movie it. business. I can't. Can I enjoy wait, fucking Swimming with Sharks anymore because of fucking Kevin Spacey? God damn it. Yeah. You can still watch <laughs> movies that Kevin Spacey was in. Yeah. yeah. It's still a He's good never going to be in any more movies. Yeah, no, exactly. he won't. But yeah. he's, so you might as well enjoy it. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's a know. fucking asshole in that movie. He so is. you could just fucking hate him. Oh, yeah. He's great. I'm definitely going to watch Baby Driver again. True. There you go. He does get uh, hit with a car in that movie. Yeah, I, he's so not a good fine. guy in that's that fine. movie either. So Good. So any movie, you can just yeah. take out your hatred at Kevin mm-hmm. Spacey. Yeah. So that's fine. Mm-hmm. The uh, But he runs it. Frank and, Willie did a lot of shit. And he looks skeevy as hell in this movie. Yeah, give him mm-hmm. a little a thin mustache and some like older glasses. Long, greasy hair, too. Fuck that guy, yeah. Ugh. Well, when they wander into the office to, to rent a room for the night, there's the sound of screaming coming from the back room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which he plays off as, oh yeah, I was just uh, watching some TV. I'm watching a horror movie, yeah. But it totally doesn't sound like nope. that. It sounds nope. like somebody's getting murdered in the back room. Like right in, right on the other side of the door. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it's really close. Yeah. So this couple ends up spending the night at this hotel. I'll go sleep in the car. 
Mm-hmm. I'm fine. I'd, I'd much rather sleep in the car. I would rather sleep in the car. I know there were several moments, and this is always the thing that these movies, this, this is what happens. Yep. Yeah, this is why you watch them. You so you sit can go, there, no! Yeah. You say, like, right? Like, I wouldn't make that decision. Right. I would make this decision. Right. You should be doing this right now and whatever. And this hypothetical, because this is what it is, right? Right. Boot camp for the time. To be fair, they went to the hotel with the intention of getting their car fixed again, not staying there. True. Mm-hmm. They, I will say to this movie's credit, the characters for the most part do make really smart choices and don't do the dumb, obvious things. Well, at least, you know, Kate Beckins jail, Dale's pointing it out like, no, we should leave. You know, just yeah. walk in they're screaming like, She's, no, let's get out of here. Mm-hmm. Dude doesn't know we're here yet. We should <laughs> leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's probably the right move. Um, yep. but no, they end up taking a, uh, a room for the night. Okay. So this is the, the thing where this movie kind of, uh, so basically at this point, we've got your kind of standard thriller setup, mm-hmm. right? You got people staying in a room. We know that, I mean, just because of the movie that we're in, we right. know that they're going to be in danger, but this is all set up. There's the dread of something, you know, kind of building, but in the room, they discover a bunch of videotapes. Mm-hmm. Right? Unmarked VHS, always yeah. a dangerous game. I I have a friend of mine that likes to go to Goodwill and like Salvation Army, what what have you, and buy people's like like home recorded VHS really? tapes. Really? Yes. That's he calls it well. He calls it t- well because usually it's like an episode of TV and it's got like the old commercials on right, it, and yeah. like he'll take the old commercials and upload them to YouTube and stuff, and that's probably how you've seen old commercials. Sure. Um, I tell him he is playing a very dangerous game because someday it is going to not be an episode of Wings. It's going to be homemade porn or something you don't want to see. All right. Uh, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but that is what your friend is looking for. I Like, that is exactly what that be. friend wants to find. It could be. Because or are you projecting right now, Sean? I would love... <laughs> no. I would love to find that shit. <laughs> okay. That would be great because that is a window into the past that you don't get anywhere else. I think that's why he does it in general is to get a window into the past no because, matter what it is. No matter what it is. Yeah. Because you could if you could find some weird shit, I'd be all for that. It's that kind yeah, of... Oh, yeah. uh, then you're the this Indiana is what people Jones were like of, back... Uh, yeah, you're yeah. discovering yeah. things. You're just like, look what I found. Yeah. You could share with... Oh, yeah. Shit, yeah. yeah. The, the, he, I might start doing that. He, like... I told him he idea. needs to like calculate like a percentage of how often the label is accurate to what's on there. Like he needs to take a catalog of everything he has and see if it matches up with the label and see what the ratio is. I'm really <laughs> curious of how because like I don't. I mean, my dad was like a meticulous VHS labeler, so oh, yeah. like so it was, was like, always right. It was like I can fit four like ninety oh, minute yeah. movies on mm-hmm. those fucking yeah. things too. Oh, yeah. yeah, so like I I never <laughs> yeah, had I've that got problem. This super but... long play set on this mm-hmm. thing, so yep. I get every movie. Oh, yeah. in there. Well, you had to figure like what movie can I dub right here because how much time do I have? left based on the running time of yep. these movies yes mm-hmm. oh yeah it was terrible yeah there yeah. was a math had to be done you had to do math back in the day <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. not these days when you're just gonna like yeah it'll fit on the hard drive you had to like sit down and figure out oh i only have this much tape space well like torrents don't come with commercials no like i've never downloaded a torrent that had commercials on right it, never. Uh, yeah you know the closest i get is I, I work with movies at work and sometimes they come with commercials attached to them which is, you know, oldie, uh, oldie commercials. Uh, they're they're all new commercials, but with old ideas, like the help I fall in and I can't get up. Yeah, always part of these uh-huh. movies every single time. Uh. It's like you'll spend hours on your floor in discomfort. <laughs> it's like, oh Jesus! They know who their audience is. They I really guess. do. Yeah. There it is. Um, so this is the whole setup, right? They're going to be in here, but then this is the wrinkle, that, and this is, I assume, this is the because you you go like, well, who thought? of setting a movie in a hotel where like there's crazy killers killing people who come in off the highway. They're like, it feels like that's been done before. What's the new wrinkle? The thing, the idea that somebody came up with was like, they stayed somewhere. Right. And maybe the place had a VHS player. They're like this is fucked up. And like, what would be the craziest thing I could see there? What if there was like a snuff film on the, on the tape? And what if it took place in the room that I'm in? Yeah. Or it, it may come down to the basic idea of like, you know, we, this place is out in the middle of nowhere. What if they're watching us? Mm-hmm. What if we just show up at this place and they're just they're just watching us the whole time? Mm-hmm. And then you, I think you extrapolate from that, and you just your imagination goes wild, and you're like, "Why did they fucking kill us?" Yeah. <laughs> Which is what I think in every like. If I were to come across a place like this, I'd be like, "What if they just decided to kill us here?" Like you start thinking about who knows I'm here. Yeah, like, exactly. Well, yeah, what? How? What if I would just disappear right now? Would anybody know where I was? Like your mind just goes wild in these situations. Well, if you think about the logistics of that in this movie, do you mm. know how long it's going to take for anyone that knows them to find? Yeah, where they no. are? Yeah. because they're, they're off course of where they were supposed to be. Yep. And 
the cell phones were destroyed. So like, yeah, this is a forty-eight hours episode ready, waiting to happen. Yeah. nobody <laughs> knows where they are. Yeah. It's done, and yeah. they don't have a way of finding them either. No. They're gonna find at best. They're gonna find their car on the side of the road, but yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, maybe. Well, where did they go? Well, I mean, eventually you'd go to the ho- hotel and probably ask around. But uh, the the gist of this movie, right, is that the uh, Frank Whaley and uh, Ethan Embry and one other dude who I don't think we ever actually see a good no, look really. at what I think he, he looks dies like. masked. But they they so they lure people in. Mm-hmm. So basically, they're set up to just wait for people to wander off the fucking highway because no one comes on this road, as yeah. evidenced by this movie, where time goes by and uh, these two are the only pair mm-hmm. that we see traveling. On you this ever road. think they just? Rent a room to someone? No. No, no because they always die. I Every think, time they're doing it for yeah. I think so, because like but if you, that's a good way to cover their tracks though, right? Because if they've got like ten rooms of people that they're torturing and like killing every night, that's like gonna put way more of a spotlight on them, you yeah. know? Versus like one couple but every this is also week or two. Like well, that's what I'm thinking. Know, what if they get like three people who end up there one night? Do they just hmm. rent the rooms and let it go? Maybe because probably. there's too many people. I, I think they would. Yeah. I Maybe. think they wait. Until they get because yeah. there's only three what? of them, right? Yeah, what are they gonna do? Yeah, but the thing about this is, is this is also like an ode to entrepreneurism, right? Because you <laughs> go like, are they are they sick fuckers who just want to kill everybody because it's fun? No, no, they're killing people because it's a business, and this is how they're actually making their living. Because at some point, a truck driver shows up, True. and we're like, oh, maybe this is the guy who's gonna get him out of there. Mm-hmm. But turns out he's there to pick up a box, mm-hmm. a box of VHS tapes. From Frank Bailey of yeah. Snuff Films. This is a movie studio. Yeah, it's it <laughs> really is. Yeah. It really it's is. It's a snuff movie studio, but uh-huh. it's still a, it's a uh-huh. studio. All right, they're, kids. They're living at home. in a set. You think there's some porn next in there? I there think there has so. to be. I think there's well, got to be. It's part of I the think, snuff, I think right? Yeah. I, guess, well, I think yeah. so. I think it's part of Well, also, just like. Because you have the cameras on the room, you film them doing whatever, then right. you bust then you in later them. and yeah. kill so them. So that's got to be part of it. Because he's got a fucking switcher. Because I was asking about this earlier in the movie. Because you're a television person to the death. It's got switched camera angles. It's not just one camera angle, because that'd be boring. You got to have like. No, you got to go around. Yeah. Well, you don't want them to be able to get in a corner and you can't see anything. So yeah. there's cameras hidden Cover in the, the air ducts. There's cameras hidden everywhere. Now, I will say uh, cameras hidden in air ducts. Not one of those um, uh, angles or, or or the footage had the uh, great lines in front of it. Well, because you focus far enough out. Uh, and blurs I don't know. Shit I, don't, out I don't think your shit was that good back in 2007. I think there would have <laughs> been some great angles in front of that. Just saying if we if we were in the just the 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 burgeoning uh, smartphone era. Yeah. I think there's going to be some greats. Well, now they got fucking cameras so small that right. you can't even see them. But back then they were full on. Like, yeah. You like know, fucking camera. Did you guys yeah. find it extra disturbing how like the lens like adjusted when he was looking at it? Yeah. That bothered me because I was like, oh, that shit's live. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, and it's like, not only is it live, someone's sitting at the other end looking someone's at looking you through it, it yeah. right now. Like as soon as he saw that, it'd be like, mm, nope. the little details like that, I think are nice. He found movie. one camera and didn't freak out. And then he found like three other ones. I'm just like, nah. Well, he freaks out when he see, you know, cause that's the, the growing horror yes. is that they realize that the, what they're watching on the tapes is taking place in the room that they're in. And then it's like, so then it's a, only a moment or, a, you know, like at some point they're coming into this room. Yeah. I, I almost wonder if, if this was thought of, but they cut it or whatever like i kind of expected them to channel flip and land on a live feed of their room i, I thought that happened like the I, last right? time i that's saw it i, was like, I, I remember was them movie. like looking at the thing going like, like, oh my god that's I, mean, I felt like that was in a trailer or something was maybe it? it was maybe or a different know. movie that or some, <laughs> like, some, it definitely maybe has it was happened vacancy before two. maybe no. it was a different movie it definitely has happened. i know before. i've seen that before right, right? you know yeah it's happened where it's the snuff room, the kill room, yeah. and then all of a sudden the camera switches to like the yeah. yeah. What is that movie, listener? Yeah, I know I've seen know, it. It has. It's happened. Yeah, I yeah. guarantee it's happened. Yeah. Um. So then it becomes like you know we're waiting for these guys in masks to show up, and then it's a survival thing where you know we have to outwit them. So here's where I was kind of um concerned about where this was going. The um the idea that they're able to see these tapes right and so this yeah. gives them a foreshadowing a warning of what's about to happen where all the snuff videos that they watch of which there i think there was uh nine people credited as snuff actors yeah in this movie which is a bigger 
uh, amount of the cast than the actual, than the actual cast, <laughs> actors yeah. in the movie. Um, all seem to be taken completely by surprise by uh, the event. So is... Is this an accident that they're in the honeymoon suite with all the know. tapes even, there? Even if I did watch it on TV before it happened, people bursting into the room to try and kill me would also still elicit the reaction I well, saw. Yeah, on those but tapes. this is that kind of see. This is the thing. Like if 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 I'm the killer and I put you in a room right. with the do tape, do you want there, them to see it? This is part of that I, game. I think it's. Thing. Right. I think it escalates with with each victim you know i think sometimes they add in new things like that and right. kind of I, yeah, develop sure. it as they go I along wanna, i agree i, I want to watch the escalation of your fear yeah, before yeah. I they kill get you off because, on that yeah. part sure yeah. i'm sure it doesn't happen all the time but i'm sure sometimes they're like yeah put some tapes in there let's yeah see what they do i wonder if they kind of be like oh these people are gonna be a challenge let's really fuck with them right. like you also know. because they haven't had a problem up until this point i don't mm-hmm. think it doesn't feel like like I think they've been pretty successful up till this point. Well, it because, seems like they overpowered those other people pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. but it, it always because that's what I was wondering if if Luke Wilson and Kate Beckinsale if this is the first time that someone is aware that someone's coming for them. I think the so. The other one just seems to be like Maybe. and then dudes pop out of the fucking woodwork yeah. mm-hmm. and start brutalizing them in the room. My little eye, a movie where the whole house is rigged. That was like a streaming uh, mm-hmm. thing, right? They had cameras all over the house and they were going to kill mm-hmm. people in it. Yeah. Because you had the audience was like paying money to get on the streaming site or whatever. I mean, this is the whole like Halloween resurrection. Yeah, right. There you go. (laughs) Where does this idea come from? Like, what the idea that like there Uh, are? It's all voyeurism. We all like to watch, right? But something we all like to watch for voyeurism, where Americans are watching other Americans kill each other. Yeah, and we're gonna pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. We have been, we get those Did this just come around in the 2000s, or has that like always been there? I the think it came well, to the surface some, in the 2000s. I think we all, we're all made aware of it in the 2000s. Death Race 2000. There you go, sure. right? That was the whole... No, but, there's, yeah. but there's the idea in there that people are watching, and I mm-hmm. think there is a very, like... Uh, let's yeah, say that was a TV let's, show. Let's say it become way more commercialized yeah. in this era the than Hunger it ever Games, has that was is... before. I mean, but then we it gets... Yeah, yeah it comes to fruition and things like that. Yeah. The you Hunger Games is a trilogy watching. built on voyeurism. Yeah. Like. <laughs> but I think that's it's always been a thing because because it's something you don't get to see normally. Mm-hmm. And that is always intriguing to whether people want to admit it or not, that is always intriguing to see something you've never seen before. Yeah, that's why Faces of Death had Faces like of five death. volumes or whatever. Faces of Death you know? has got all, all those and why people would, uh, like myself and my dad, would rent those from the fucking <laughs> video store and be like, this sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. Let's rent this. That's that's why you. That's why people make that stuff because they're just like, ah, I, I find this interesting. Other people have to. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. tap into that and there you go. People want to watch, Colin. <laughs> I know. I, I yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I suppose that uh, you know that they they used to do the um, like the the Mondo movies where the kind of you know we would go somewhere and see like real animals being killed or some strange oh, Jesus, rituals. Did, and you, you know, no, I never saw these, but this was like a, a thing in the what was it the early early seventies, really? and then that kind of gave way to. Uh, I mean, what was your other like uh, you know the idea of watching. Um, it's getting you closer to death in some way, right? Yeah, oh but, yeah. but the idea, I guess, it's a, it's with, a preparation with the, the as added well to thing avoid death is because that was like we're gonna go and observe like uh, something where this happens, right? We're just gonna be right. cameramen there, but now it's like we're actually participating in it. We're uh, paying for the experience of either paying for it just to see how it turns out, yeah, you know. Uh, putting people in a situation where they have to kill themselves and we're always watching or they have to escape the room and there's, you know, traps in it or whatever. Yeah, it does seem like this formula is being used an awful lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because At it's this time to track especially. It back it's my head still like, always where is intriguing. It? Yeah. Yeah. It'll always be intriguing. That's mm-hmm. one that'll always come back around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Forever and ever. Mm-hmm. Well, the, um, so what, what, what happens once they get uh, all set up and the, the masked guys are coming in at them? They try like Luke Wilson tries to hold the door. Kate Beckinsale tries to like. It's a lot of knocking. The- this is uh, this is a disturbing part for me. The, what, knocking, the knocking on the doors. Yeah, because it's like it's it's like police knocking. It, it's it's <laughs> this would freak me the fuck out if I was just in a room and people were because they the have an, the adjoining door that right. adjoins the rooms. That's and just loud pounding. banging, knocking mm-hmm. on the doors back and forth for this is a good like seven to ten minutes of this movie, mm-hmm. and it's just. Uh, something I would just be like, nope, I'm done. 
Well, and then there's the phone will ring, someone will bang on the door, and just constant loop of that, trying to get you caught off guard. That stuff bugs me. So the movie's trying to set up all of these sequences, right? Where it's like, uh, it's just trying to build this this tension. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so we are kind of caught. Well, I guess it goes back to what we were saying earlier. It is putting you in that position where you have to decide, are the characters making the decisions, decisions that you would, yeah. decisions you would what'd make what'd you think there okay so how does this movie score on that uh on that pretty high i would say yeah yeah i think i think for the most part they good. do really well um if i it's especially considering watching, other horror movies they do very well compared right. to other movies. watching the movie i guess it is it's not too long before they see like fine cameras and vents and mm-hmm. where they decide that they need to leave mm-hmm. but i i feel like if they had figured it out sooner they would have done the same thing and gone out and run into the people like they did. Mm-hmm. So I think they were damned no matter what they did. But- well, that's what Luke we- Luke Wilson even says that. He says, well, if we run outside right now, they're expecting us and they're going to catch us. Like- yeah. But- yeah. I like the fact that he's trying to outthink them. Yeah. You know what else I appreciated? The soundtrack on this movie, not so much uh, the score, which sound the opening titles, right? Seem like it's uh, going for a, a, a 1950s Alfred Hitchcock. Thing. It really does. It's trying to be a Saul Bass intro. Yeah. 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 But it's, yeah. it's after effects or whatever. So it's yeah. that, that title sequence that like pretty much anybody can do now, but yeah, it's uh, the in, kinetic typography and yeah. you're just going through all of it. Yeah. In 2007, that was a new thing. And the music yeah. sounds like this is going to be like uh, North by Northwest. It by, does. Yeah. Like, panic room or something like that. Yeah. Um, it's not. Yeah. But uh, they no, got I've, lofty with those titles. Right. What was I going for here? It wasn't the titles. It was the feeling of the. Uh, uh, I got lost it. Lost it. I forgot what I was talking feeling about. of what they set up versus what they were delivering. The score, the soundtrack. The you're score, talking about soundtrack. that. The soundtrack. Yes. Not the score. Talking about the. The breathing. Uh, Luke Wilson's breathing caught on camera. Mm-hmm. Like there's something about that. Uh, the quick draw of air because he sounds like he's terrified out of his mind. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and so he's kind of. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. and you can really hear it amplified on the soundtrack album yeah. or the album, the the soundtrack, and that kind of aids you in this kind of feeling of anxiety. I, Kate Beckinsale is pretty much, even though she's scared, she was cooler, right? You know, than he was, mm-hmm. and yeah. I think that kind of like he amps was, up your anxiety factor hearing that kind of uh, that breathing. Yeah, you know? he was breathing and sweating a lot. In this yeah. Movie. Yeah. yeah, trying to but figure out like what you know. I'm trying to outthink. Right. Like, he what really are they is. Doing? He goes into like we got to figure this. Problem yeah, we got to watch yeah. the tapes. These snuff film tapes. By the way, kids at home, uh, snuff films, bad idea because you are on camera committing. It's evidence. Uh, yeah, it's evidence. <laughs> that's, the, it's that's why nobody. That's why it's a, evidence. Wow, I'm glad we're giving the basics of like, hey, snuff films are bad. Well, because people think also that you're snuff films people. are real, uh, but snuff films are basically an urban legend for yeah. this very reason. That you know, it's like you know, well, unless you're an idiot out there, they're wearing masks, Colin. Yeah. No one could figure that out. Like the machine, <laughs> the machine, he never takes his mask off. He did though in the movie in the script. He did eight millimeter. There you go. Uh so <laughs> digression yeah 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 so so they're um, pounding on the door trying to get in luke wilson's holding the door telling kate beck and sale to go check the bathroom window it's nailed shut this is like something i assume that like the people running the hotel like figured out at some point all oh, people are getting out the bathroom window nailed yeah. shut because well, like yeah, i said they, avenue of escape yeah but like that it's they seem to well. like you know no it's not it's, it's very like obvious bent, too right the bent nails it's mm-hmm. like oh someone's gonna cut mm-hmm. the it's very crudely that. done yeah yes. um I remember. I forget what I was gonna say. I well, they, they, get, they find tunnels because somehow the guys are getting into the into right, the right. Because we the we room. do see like like just on the uh, edges of the screen, like the the guys in the masks pop out like, of nowhere. They're, they're pop. They're in the bathroom. How they get not there? there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they're yeah. gone again. Yep. Yeah, so they're showing up in little places yeah. all over the and place. And Luke like, Wilson stays up all night watching all the tapes to figure out where people went wrong and how right. they made mistakes, and that's how he figures out they're coming in from somewhere. From the bathroom. And he finds a trap door under the rug in the bathroom. I like, like the fact that the killers wait for him to actually make the, you know, like they're just watching, presumably. Well, he does cover allow up. Allow him to He covered camera. up the ones he yeah, could see. Then I would, if I was the killers, I'd go in at that point. Like, fuck them. That I'm bored. Because he said, like, they come in when they get bored or whatever. I would go in at that point, sure. fuck them up, because I can get in however I want, and sure. just like, boom. Mm-hmm. But no, they're, they're waiting until he can figure all this shit out. So there's a series of tunnels, which is, this is the part of the movie I completely forgot about. Oh, yeah. see, I, I remember. I totally <laughs> forgot. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. I was yeah. like, the one thing that stuck out in my mind, because I remember being like, Friday the 13th, 
Ripped uh, this off. That's yeah. what I they thought. They ripped of. this yes. off. While yeah, we were yeah. watching this, yeah. Jason's tunnels yeah. under the camp. Right. So the gas station, he just transferred the motel, and the motel office, which is the command center where the switcher is, and all the uh, the, the the little TV studio, right, are all connected by a trap door that leads you know through all these things. Tunnels. They do tons of tunnels. That uh, it's kind of a cliche moment where uh, help does appear at some mm-hmm. point in the form of a police officer shows up. Well, first a we very get, dopey police officer. First we get um because like you mentioned earlier we got the uh, uh a trucker shows up and so there's like some indecision maybe like, he'll help us is he here to help us is he one of them there's always that like uh, I don't know what's going on and it appears for a little bit that that trucker is there to help them because he's curious about what's going on and he walks over and then he gets interrupted by Frank Whaley who gives him the box of tapes that we said. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, no, he's here to get his snuff films and then move on. So he knows what's going on. Well, and so there's that lingering doubt right. when the cop shows up. Well, and the reason why they are so suspicious of who's in on it and who's not and can they trust anyone is because Luke Wilson escapes at some point to a phone booth to make a call to 911. And the phone booth is just rigged right back to the motel front desk. Yeah. And then a car comes at him while he's in the phone booth. This was like the money shot in the trailer. I remember it was, this trailer. Yeah, I remember I rem- that. And even when I was like 17 and this came out, I remember being like, they sh- shouldn't have shown that in the trailer. That would have been such a j- great been. jump scare, like in the theater. Yeah, but everyone knew been. it was coming as soon as he stepped in that phone booth. So. Yeah, you never see his like point of view. Seeing the headlights coming at him, it's mm-hmm. just like he looks out and then jumps out. Boom! Yeah. Car tears mm-hmm. the thing apart, right, which I think is better for it if we had not seen it in the trailer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I would agree. But like now, when you're watching the movie, as soon as he steps in the phone booth, you're like, okay, well that car is going to come through any minute Something's now. Something's going to so. happen. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't remember that, McKayla. Oh, it was the moment in the trailer. I don't remember the trailer. Because, like, it was such a, like, a oh, shit moment that, like, it was the hotel desk that was on the other end of the phone. And then, like, they accent it with the uh, car coming through. So uh-huh, uh-huh. That's how you sell it. One, it's two, the punch. paranoia thriller. Mm-hmm. That's it. There's no one to help you. You have to, it's self-reliance. That's what this movie's yep. preaching. Mm-hmm. Self-reliance. And there's nobody else out there. Mm-hmm. Well, except for that cop. But he's ineffectual. Authorities are ineffectual. We're all alone. Because he lets, uh, well, there was a couple things. I'm like, you know, the whole idea of like, I called 911. How did they know to come here? Well, because 911, I when you pick up the phone and dial 911, they're automatically, like they are automatically, they are automatically finding out where the hell you when are. When it sounds yeah. like it's ringing, they are able to, that, yeah. that's being recorded. And uh, the cop lets the dude like walk behind him. Yeah, like, yeah we, did, look we all at the, discussed this is not a thing that yeah. any cop would do. He's a very, like, Mayberry cop. Like, he seems like... Yeah. This is the most action this guy has seen in ever. years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> ever. He, he strikes me more as, like, one of those, like, lumpy security guards you would see in a movie that doesn't actually do anything, you I know? know? But, but he seems... He's pretty quick on the uptake when it comes to figuring out that something is he wrong. He has no follow-through, though. Maybe not. I don't know. He shouldn't. He he misses a few rules because he's not uh, used to any action happening. Mm-hmm. But when it does start to go down, because he His also antenna is quivering. I it guess, is like, because you know, he also sees times. the videos that are playing on the TV, and he puts together that hey, this is happening in the room that I'm in, mm-hmm. and so he immediately yeah, goes, so something is wrong. Pretty quick. But that's because so the audience that. already knows this, so right. he's figuring it out really quick. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am in danger. Right. There's something going on here. But then, like all movies do. Your uh, salvation is dangled before you before yes. it being taken away, snuffed out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um. This leads to uh like an a, an action. Then the movie becomes basically an action thriller, mm-hmm. right? Luke Wilson punches a mirror to get shards of glass as like right? a makeshift weapon, which is a smart move. Which I kept we, arguing for like forever. Like, like we need weapons. Weapon. Yeah, we need, we need something to hit somebody with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I get the idea that the guys have gone through the room and taken away everything that you could possibly use for a weapon. Sure, I'm sure. I think yeah. you could convert things. But into again, a like weapon. he pulled, a, he pulled the uh, um, the shower curtain rod down. Mm-hmm. That could be yeah. something. In the I can kill somebody with a shower the, curtain. The, rod. You figure it out yeah. the, if you're in that situation. You figure you'll, out how. I can kill, out. I can kill motherfuckers how. with a lot of shit in that room. <laughs> right. I can, I'll take that lamp and I'm going to kill yeah. somebody with it. Nobody ever thought of the lamp. I was yeah. Like, you, I could kill somebody with that lamp. Yeah. You could ostensibly uh, strangle someone with the phone cord even. Yeah, you know? I will like, try. Yeah. Because at that point, I think you can you can get yourself hyped up enough where even if the dude's coming at you with a knife, mm-hmm. you're just going to go at him no matter what. 
Mm-hmm. Like everything goes out the door, and you're just like, all right, it's me or him, and I'm gonna take this fucking mm-hmm. guy down. Yeah, that's I the think thing. You gotta go there that's quick. his advantage. I, I think, think you, you gotta go to like who's hunting who here. Yes, I like, think you do. Fuck you, <laughs> you know. Like, right. I am probably gonna die, but <laughs> right. But I'm gonna. Yeah. That's right. I'm taking you out. Yeah, one I way think or another. You can do like it. Uh, Liam Neeson at the end of the Gray. That's uh, the way. Sure, you just go strap ahead. some bottles to your fists and, and go yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, fuck it. That's the thing. Like with this movie is like it's, they're using very close range weapons like they're kind of like they're, they seems like they're mostly stabbings in the videos yes. we watch so it's like it's not like they're coming in and getting like mowed down with automatic weapons they have right. a chance there's, like there, yeah there's that opportunity so. there yeah, are because apparently they have them there frank whaley has them above the door and they work uh you know apparently mm-hmm. uh the action sequence so luke wilson i mean like the, the, <laughs> you, the, you want to call him skywalker don't you <laughs> No, the, the, but the character. The, do you want to hear me say? No. Sky, I'll call him Skywalker from here. Yeah, uh, so the dynamic, this is the drama, is built up that these two characters, Luke Wilson and, and Kate Beckinsale, yes, they've been they, they're on their way to a divorce and their marriage has fallen apart. But uh, through like this extreme circumstance, through trauma. Uh, they tell the truth. I'm sorry that I never did blah, blah, blah. And I'm sorry. And like, yeah, after this is over, we're going to give this a second shot. Uh, you know? I, st- I don't think that's enough. <laughs> it, it won't work. It won't it, work. Be- I will, I'll say, yeah, I, I'll guarantee it won't work. I did not buy it, but no, I get what I don't either. Like, In the moment when your brain's going insane yeah, like that, right. it makes sense. Right, because but- that's also the only thing you can grab onto. Yeah. And you're just like, ah, yeah, exactly. no, this is not yeah, going to work. Past In this it. situation, we have to depend on our, each other yes. to survive. We have to work together. This is right. the... The ultimate, like, uh, you know, marriage uh, partnership. It doesn't make their kid any less dead. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's the ultimate marriage counseling All these right problems now. come back. You no. know, yeah. So, so this will not later. be working out later on. No, yeah. it'll last for like a month maybe, and then they'll be. But is it also uh, movie screenwriter 101? See, this is where I'm checking off. This is where this movie is, like, going, wandering right into the cliches. The whole, like, when we get out of this, we're going we're gonna to try this again and, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said everything out there is a fresh start. Mm-hmm. This is the dead meat thing flashing above his head <laughs> mm-hmm. at this point. It's like, well, they say this because now you're like built up with hope. And in the next scene, ooh, stabbed in the gut. Yep. <laughs> Which spoiler warning for the end of the movie. That's right. Jump ahead like, you know, to the end of the podcast. The uh, I would this have been. Would you have preferred that he died. Yes. I mean, I don't, I kind of like the ending of the movie because it, it's kind of ambiguous, I think. It feels I, to me like he it's survived. Very, it's very I feel like they the could end. both still die at the end because like, we don't have any sense that anyone... It's not like the last shot of the movie has like a cop car rolling up to rescue them, you know what I'm saying? It's still just no. them alone yeah, stuck but there. Everyone's, has, but everyone's dead at that point. Yeah, it has. It, I think those type of endings where it's like, okay, so you know, Kate Beckinsale is able to... Uh, kill two of the guys with one car. Yes. She f- mm-hmm. does find a car because the sun comes up. It's the next morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, uh, she was hiding in the ceiling. She has a guy coming through the sunroof of the car and she pins the other guy. He slams into the fucking hotel room. Yes. So kills the guy, I assume, you know, just by just the by trauma. Through. And the other guy slammed against the wall. So she killed both of them. Oh, I'm sure that guy in the sunroof's neck got broken. Oh, yeah. yeah, right? yeah, yeah like, back like, and everything. Oh, yeah. 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 Fucked yeah. up. He is busted. In fact, I. I, I uh, maybe this uh, um, contribute this to the movie, but I feel like I saw him like right where his back is connected directly with the roof of the hotel yeah. as they drove uh, in. Yeah, Just yeah, like, yeah. oh they no, used, that guy's dead. They that was all practical with stuntmen and dummies too. Oh, like that was ugh. like no CGI. They're very proud of the fact that that sure. was all practically Good for done them, so. because that looked uh, yeah. horrible. It looked, it looked like looked a like real car died. accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah people That's died. why that stuff is good when yeah. you do that. Um, but she uh. So she, I guess, you know, I prefer he died. Yeah, I, I'd, be, I'd he, be perfectly. It would be the same. It's the, it's barely any different that he's alive. I'd prefer he be dead. Hey, I suppose it's a more audience pleasing moment. Sure. That, like, you know, because he, he gets stabbed and he collapses. She has to survive on her own and figure right. out. Which I know, like that. I like that he guys. put her up there and he's like, no, yeah. I can't also be up there. And then he dies. But you're going to live and then he gets stabbed. Yeah, sure. I'm perfectly fine with that. It's great. But it's like. 
And I wonder if this is now we watch this on Amazon Prime, so we don't know if there's an alt. But this feels like one of that era it feels like of a, the two thousands. Like we shot the multiple two, cuts, yeah. And, yeah, yes, two endings, the alternate ending, yeah. <laughs> and there was probably one where he died, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wonder. I, I, I wonder, and I wonder if the audience test changed that. You know? It was all. It's I almost wonder. guaranteed that there was an alternate ending to yeah. this movie because that's what we did in this time. That's because all this feels like the alternate ending where a test audience said. That's too bleak, and we would prefer it if he died. And the studio caved and said, "Like, okay, well then let's use the other ending where he lives." Yeah, because as you were saying, it's not, uh, you know, the fine point is drawn on it that everything works out. Yeah. But it's basically all the other dudes are dead, the cops are coming, and he's breathing, and he's she's like, "Don't let my husband die," and then we kind of pull away. But the the effect of the movie is to like you've been holding your breath. For this amount of time, at this point, you kind of relax and you're breathing again. You know, it's the ah, right. and then you off to credits. Yeah. You know, yeah. So that's why I guess I take it as it's not ambiguous that way to me. That it's like okay, he right. lived. That I guess like movie. when I say ambiguous, it's not tightly wrapped up. I don't think. I don't think like I feel like it's probably a bad example, but like. The ending of Get Out literally has like police coming to the scene. You know what I'm saying? Like, can and, you imagine and, if Get Out ended a few frames earlier with just like him standing there amongst all the dead bodies? And that was it. Like, you don't know. Like, it's a little mm. bit different than if oh, it, yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. There's we don't um, see a police car pull into frame. We don't. Movie, and also, you know? they do keep going back to Frank Whaley's body, which is I think them, um, because nothing comes of it. But there's at least like it feels like there's three shots of her going back and forth between rooms. Yeah, because she's going to look at the body cord, so right. she can make a phone call. He's and so, it. and what you're expecting as uh, anyone who's seen horror movies before is for like the body yeah. to not be there at some point. Mm -hmm. And so they keep showing that. So they're still like, it's not like they haven't, they haven't let the tension down yet. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to let your guard down yet. So, mm -hmm. Up until that point, you're still like, is something still going to yeah, happen? Yeah, because if you're in that situation, you're just because you called the cops doesn't mean you're relaxed and that right. tension is gone. You're not going to relax to like no. actually or you're there. Live to like get there, especially because she tried calling the cops before and look how it worked out. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. It's a good point, John. This is a. Uh, so yeah, there's still a, a lot of tension going up to that point, but mm -hmm. uh, he should have died. Yeah, he'd be better if he died. Well, there's a there's a vacancy too. Is there yeah. three? I have not seen it. I have not nope. seen it. I'm surprised that Sean hasn't seen it. Yeah. Uh, Sequel I, over I, I uh, <coughs> didn't remember a lot of this movie, <laughs> so I don't think I would have gone for Vacancy 2, which it's, I felt like probably got more brutal and more uh, torture porny, I'm it's, guessing. It's funny because whenever like you bring up this movie to anyone, they go, Oh yeah, like that's like everyone. <laughs> yeah. Everyone completely yeah. like this movie disappeared yeah. immediately. Yeah, but they all saw it. That's the thing. It's like right. everybody and saw this. Retained in none of it. Or, yeah, didn't retain. Yeah. Well, you just remember it's the one where Kate Beckinsale and Luke Wilson are in the hotel. Is this and one somebody's of trying the to kill times them. they got. This felt like one of the times they got bigger name stars, as big name stars as Kate Beckinsale and Luke Wilson mm -hmm. are, bigger name stars to do a horror movie like yeah, this. Yeah, that's kind of a big deal. I honestly. think that was the big draw yeah. when this came out. But I think yeah. that's, that's why remember. we remember Vacancy I is think, because I think of so. the star power. I think you know, so. And yeah. that, di it, that didn't happen often. And right. the fact that it was happening with these two and it was this movie, I think that was the big draw for this movie. And that's why they're like, oh, that's why people are like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that movie. Maybe mm -hmm. not for anything that happened in it. But well, for that the and like, who were in it. I don't know if you guys remember, like, but the marketing was everywhere for this movie. I yeah, remember I remember trailers seeing it constantly. Everywhere. It was a big. So what? Uh, how much? How what? How did this do? Not great. No, <laughs> it cost nineteen million and it did thirty five. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. So it was profitable, yeah, but not sure. But advertising and shit. Considering yeah. We, we considering saw it how much advertising yeah. we but saw, I wonder it's not if great. it's because of the glut of uh, similar movies I that think you're so. talking about that came out. It's like we had so much to choose from. You got. Uh, it was a good year for it. horror, so right. yeah. Don't so. blame you if you skipped this one. But I wonder know? if this is one of those movies where they kind of they make it going like, yeah, you spend a bunch of money on the front end advertising. So people recognize the title. So it lives on video. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is this yeah. a cult video hit? Has everyone seen this movie? On, this is uh, like this movie. I mean, I'm trying to remember what the state of Blockbuster was in 2007. <laughs> but like to me, this screams like huge rental success. I could see this making Probably. way more money in rentals than it ever did in theaters because I think sense. like like you said, it's the vague familiarity of it. Like if you're walking the aisles and you see that cover, you're like, hey, honey, vacancy. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, a trailer for this or a poster yeah, or. Let's I know that's that got tonight. Kate Beckinsdale and uh, Luke Wilson. Yeah, in it. Mm -hmm. I, that, that's probably a big renter. Luke Wilson doing now? Nothing. 
That's fine. I can't remember anything else he's in. Uh, so I was when Bottle I was doing Rocket. I mean, well, come but on. that was before this. Come on, that '70s show. Was he in that? Yeah, he was. He, he was Kelso's brother. Uh, he yeah. was in one of my favorite episodes of The X Files. It was called Bad Blood. Okay, fine. Cool. Was, oh, he, he was in. I he thought was he in was Blue really Streak good in it with he Martin. Played no, I'm just not that familiar characters. with the X Files. I know, but so. like that was where I was like, "Holy shit, he's actually like he's acting." He was in Blue Streak. Yeah. Yeah. Who wasn't in Blue Streak? Uh, there were a lot of people in Blue Streak. <laughs> so when I was doing research for this movie, there's not a lot of information about the production or anything or like any stuff. But the two things I was able to find <laughs> really say a lot about this movie. Um, Luke Wilson showed up late and hung over almost every day of shooting. Nice. Um, he was trying to get in the character. Apparently, he was miserable to work with and just terrible on set. Um, he so like when they were shooting scenes and Kate Beckinsale would have like close ups or oneers of her, and she needed someone to like read lines so she could yeah. do it. It's a very common thing. The other actor just stands off screen and does it. Right? He refused to do it and sent his stand in to do it. Mm-hmm. And. After a while of him doing that, she got really annoyed. So when it was his turn to do oneers and she was supposed to read, she just sent her headshot and said, just read to this. <laughs> uh, so look, they did, hate each other. Surpri- to be I, fair I to Luke Wilson, if you send a stand-in, it's probably a brother. Or you another, know, another Wilson it, but, of the family. Who are you it's to probably be, Owen Wilson. Luke Wilson, who are you to be all too good for anything? Like True. <laughs> I saw a thing just recently, like some one of those pop-up ads was like, you know, true stories of when a uh, movie... Uh, actors hated each other, and it had the picture for vacancy. Did it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They like, hate each other. They, well, isn't that... Google's tapping my shit. Like, use that. Like, use it. Yeah. <laughs> like I would, I would argue, like Kate Beckinsale's the way bigger star in that situation. I think, I'd say like so. she, she's led a whole franchise of how many movies? Like, yeah, but how many of those were out <laughs> by out then? The but time. she had uh, Pearl Harbor, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, she did Pearl Van Harbor. Helsing, and it's I mean, true. she was. Uh, Ser- some serendipity yeah. was out ah, by this point. Serendipity. So, yeah, she's been in she's been in a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. So I know. again, that's why she's a draw. She for was this movie, theatrical for a horror movie. up and a theatrical draw up until uh was it the disappointments <laughs> the disappointments room? Who saw oh, that? Jesus. Anyone nope. Jesus. Don't I even haven't know thought what that about is. that movie yeah. since you fucking but it, it, oh it came out in theaters. I'm like, you're never gonna wow. be in a theatrical movie again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I could be wrong. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um Okay. I'm still thinking about uh Pearl Harbor. Why? There's a new one. That's not a movie out. worth thinking about. Because I like that movie. What's the, the new one? In 1941? What? There's a new Pearl Harbor. A Roland Emmerich movie. Oh, it is. Oh, God. Is it, is 19... it called 19... No, not... that's the Steelberg... Steven Spielberg movie. It's called... Uh... I don't remember. But there's a Roland Emmerich... It might Emmerich be 1941. Pearl Harbor movie. It, I think it is 1941. Okay. Uh, you might be right. Because it's it's very simple. Because that's the only thing they put on screen. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, it's 1941. Got Benedict Cumberbatch in it? Yeah. Or am I thinking of a different movie? No, this is a new Roland Emmerich Pearl Harbor, Harbor movie. movie has yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch in I'm it. I'm pretty Are we sure. Mixing two... No, there's ni- that's 1913 or something like that. No. That's a World War One movie. There's also the big uh, uh, Roland Emmerich. The 1941. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'll tell you what we're going to do, listener. Yep. We're going to answer some of your mail brought to us by our mailman, Igor. And then we're going to go around the room. We're going to tell you if you should watch vacancy or if you should watch it again in most cases probably you're all familiar with it right it's a more recent movie so first of all igor bring us the mail masters masters the mail i've got the mail so many letters our followers are rising rising why thank you igor i think he thinks we're going on summer vacation or something he's got a little suitcase packed for the motel oh (laughs) No, you no, don't. No. You're not coming anymore. <laughs> we lost the keys. I don't think we can unchain you right now. So He's maybe not just, going does he know anywhere. like summer's almost over? Just so a little down. late for a summer vacation. I know. Point, we go like, to beach. Yeah. It was like barely there summer. It's very weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So once again, we're reminding you how you can get a hold of us. And please do on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sad Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. On Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show, Feline Fatal writes in and says, this is, I think, about our Babadook episode. Mm. She writes in and says, "Uh, you mentioned Stephen King championing every horror movie, including The Dark Tower. He praised the new Pet Cemetery, even though it completely butchered his original source material. He's highly praising It Chapter 2 now, but I hope that one is a legit praise. Hereditary was, in my humble opinion. Worthy of all the hype, he praised that one also. Yeah, he cannot be trusted. He I was said say, one he of the curse best horror movies? movies. 
in years. Does he, he cannot, jinx it? No, <laughs> uh, maybe he no, cannot. He, I remember Stevie, he cannot be trusted. Yeah, yeah. but he prays like twenty eight week uh, days later. And, I mean, like usually but he's not. It's, well, he'll it, praise everything. It feels yeah, like. it's not just the praise; it's that every mo- new movie he watches is the scariest thing he's ever seen. He uses hyperbole. No, in I will all never his trust Steven Spielberg's uh, opinion. Stephen King. Stephen King. Stephen King's. I'm sorry. Uh, before I see a movie. Yeah, Yeah, because it's all hyperbole, and it's the same hyperbole every time. And he'll go back on it. He's like, "Dark Tower is great," and then he, you know, you see the video like uh, three weeks after Dark Tower came out. He was like, "Yeah, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be," and I didn't really feel like it was going to be great. Which like, like, well, fuck you, because you knew that before. You were like, "Eh, Mm -hmm. "It's going to be great." (laughs) But like, I expect that from his own adaptations. It's when he goes to things that aren't his own adaptations and feels the need to chime in and be like, "It's the scariest movie I've ever seen." No, I don't trust his opinion anymore. So, well, well, we'll I mean, he's the man who made evil dead right he made clive barker well so at yeah. some point you know it's like but that, was, give him that. Well, not, that was back in the day he's done yeah. he's done colin he has no uh he cannot he has no gas left in the tank that's why he's revisiting his old franchises with dr no, sleep he just can't discern anything anymore I mean, this is also the guy who this like wrote, horrible shit to like, say wrote, about wrote, like directed. the fucking greatest author we're of not hating on it we're not hating on his writing at all his books, we're talking his about his opinion tweeting. on movies is shit and his tweeting yes yeah, this is, is shit. his tweeting not his writing i have a gigantic stephen king book tattoo than <laughs> right so no he's yeah. not doing well it, in the tweeting of the movies all right stop tweeting another book Steven, yes. stop tweeting. get off the Twitter. Everybody yeah. should get off Twitter. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, probably yeah, all should. Twitter's off. Yeah. I like Twitter. Uh, okay. About tonight's movie, Vacancy, mm-hmm. we did have a couple of comments. Uh, Ghost freaking talking writes oh. in okay. and says, this movie just solidified my hesitation for stopping at roadside motels. Oh, yeah. Always does. It's always, you always need a good new, like... Don't stop here. Just keep driving. Yeah. You, you guys remember when that clown motel was for sale, like outside of Vegas a couple years ago? <laughs> yeah. It was a clown themed roadside motel in the va- in the Nevada desert. Oh, it was, for, it was sale? for sale. Does that mean all the clowns that worked there ran away and that's why we got all the clowns across the country? <laughs> Is that why that happened? You know what? Sean, write that movie. <laughs> write that movie. I'm going to write that movie. <laughs> I Just, do like that he it oh, solidified his hesitation. That doesn't mean he's not going to stop. You yeah. could uh, start it off being so sad by being like, they all get laid off because the hotel's closing, so you right. feel bad for them, and that's yeah. what turns them evil, because they like the one thing they love to do is be clowns at this motel. And, right, and now they have no place to concentrate their yeah. clownness, so they have to go out in the world and try and be clowns, and yeah. it's just fucking creepy. Fuck yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I just had an idea. Maybe I can make a movie out of it. Okay, That's so I there's a we, thing uh, there. I was gonna say. Well, let's put it this way. Nobody has. Mm-hmm. Well, I think they have. There's a couple of clown movies that I've heard of recently. I don't know if they have anything to do with that, but we can make this movie. All right. Well, G Money writes in and says, uh, "I got some doggy picks for you guys, but the movie yes. is a forgettable mess." <laughs> Oh, the, a freshly groomed dog is oh. a very fluffy white dog that Indeed. is uh, freshly trimmed. Dog. I think he. I think is he's he just may, taking pictures of dogs. He well, that's may not be, fair. He may be grooming dogs. Oh, are you a groomer? That would be uh, awesome. I like the way that you expect him to like answer back. No, uh, well, he can write. Well, he can write back <laughs> next true. week and tell us. Oh, that's interesting. About uh, last week's movie, Roar. Roar. Elk, Roar. An Amazon uh, ambassador. That's FC. Wait, what? Fulfillment Center ambassador said uh, strangely, Roar was the last film for many of its cast. Implying that they all get wait. Eaten by, this came uh, from an Amazon. Well, that's just in his Twitter handle. It's a Hers, joke, Sean. His... It's a joke. I was gonna say, uh, but I never, <laughs> no, it's it's just you, funny. You spend been... time on Twitter and you don't know that's a joke. No, no, no. I've been. This re- is why Twitter's an evil office. No, I've been reading know. a lot of articles about the and M- the Amazon ambassadors who were who have been tweeting out lately. Oh, there that's you go. funny. There we go. We got one. Um, <laughs> about the movie The Sentinel, which we did uh, two weeks ago. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, uh, from the ending of the movie where they cast real life uh, deformities as yes. devils, he says, I recognize one guy in uh, our photo that we put on uh, our social media from a PBS documentary. He had something similar to what the elephant man had, but yes. in half of his face. At the time of the documentary, he had a wife and kids and worked in a freak show, so I doubt he was being taken advantage of. How do you get a wife out of that? Unless it's the bearded, unless cold, it's the bearded lady. man. Well, you got to look at the person. There's a lid for every pot, Sean. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, Sean Roger writes Wait, in. Who's says, the lid? Who's the pot? He says, I'm He's so glad pot. you talked at length about this scene. Oh, the uh, Which scene? 
in the Sentinel. The the scene, the scene? The, uh, oh, number yeah, the 46 scene. on the Bravo scariest. Yeah, ah, yes. that was like when, Colin, when scene. you said that you're going to pick the Sentinel, that was like the first <laughs> scene I thought of. That's a great scene. Well, he says, I'm so glad you talked at length about the scene because it's fucking terrifying. There's nothing about it that's not scary. The dark, the silhouette, the fast walk in the dark corner, the ominous <laughs> low piano notes that score it. Wow. Just horrifying and so effective. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Maya Madsen writes in, says, I've read The Sentinel twice, but I didn't know there were sequels. I'll get on that. And thanks for the tip. There you go. Well, we established that there's only one sequel. That's The Guardian, which I think basically has the same plot as The Sentinel. Except you know the you know there's a nun and so right. and uh, the apocalypse the, the apocalypse never has not yet materialized uh, which probably won't w- probably won't uh, and Cobra can Sun Moon <laughs> welcome <laughs> wow that's a name change right there uh, uh, hello Russian bot <laughs> says uh, no it's Cobra can Kumente Cobra can Sun Moon right uh, I'm assuming it's you sure uh, said uh, Christina Rains is an amazing beauty. We liked her. I know. You're, I liked you're her. absolutely I correct. would watch her in more things. It was good. Okay. Uh Midway. That's the right. Midway is after the it's yes. it's the sequel to Pearl Harbor. Right. <laughs> kind of. Oh right. My God. We're, we're I'm glad next? we're back on our World War. Yeah. Okay. Midway. <laughs> World War II talk. <laughs> which is a remake of a movie called Midway. Midway. They already did this in okay. the seventies. Okay. They? okay. Yeah. Oh they did. Yeah, I saw that in the thing. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Okay, so <laughs> that's right. You stick with ah, us. The mystery so solved. Yeah, we are a font, font of font, font of knowledge. Uh, so now we're gonna go around the room and tell you if you should watch a movie called Vacancy. Colin, Colin, uh, we watch Vacancy tonight. What did you think of it? Uh, to be honest, I thought it was a kind of an average thriller. It was kind of a run of the mill. Like I saw it originally. Uh, this is the the experience I had going into it tonight. Right. Your mileage may vary. It was, um, I saw it when it came out, probably during the time when all these movies were, uh, you know, all kind of yep. going after week the same after thing. Week after week, all making their way to the theater. Yeah. And so I saw it, and uh, it was like, eh, it was all right. And then I haven't seen it since then. And so here we are, 12 years later, revisiting Vacancy. Mm-hmm. Um I think yeah the the big selling points of it are is the star power of seeing uh, Kate Beckinsale and uh, Luke Wilson both of them acquit themselves very well I thought as a thriller it is effectively done um, it has you know I mean it's a suspense movie it's not really a horror movie you know I think we were going into thinking maybe it was a more of a horror movie yeah we we're trying to figure it out yeah it's trying to be uh, you know I mean I suppose that Hitchcock is the influence here as evidenced. Like right off the bat. I would bat. say it's, yeah, because it's all suspense. Yeah. You get like a one or two scenes of like an execution of that. But other than that, suspense all the way through. I did enjoy that, you know, the characters were making, you know, as we said, smart choices. There were times when I was like, well, we should do this. And then they would say we should do this. And, you know, there are a lot of times that they didn't, but that's to be expected. But it just kind of felt like it was right down the middle. Like this is the, this is the, 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 is that the bar? No, the bar is the high bar. That's what you're trying to get to. This is uh, what's the? <laughs> are you the, doing gymnastics right now? What are you doing? Yeah. Well, the, what's the like? You, your middle. This is where you have to meet to be acceptable. Middle ground. Okay. Like, right. You know, two there you and, go. Two two and a half stars. Right? Wow, you're going bars ground. You're yeah, all well, yeah. Your, your metric you. is very different. <laughs> yeah. Pick yeah. Like, a metric. What is the yeah. thing? Well, where's scale. the bar? Is the bar? It the depends high on bar? where you put it. We're at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> We're drinking at the bar. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd recommend it because it's it's an okay movie. It's a decent thriller. It doesn't do anything. It's not exceptional, but it's well mounted and well performed and well executed. So there's a, a recommendation for vacancy, Sean. Oh, actually, the one thing I did want to add, uh, we were talking about the uh, whole idea of, uh, of the clever killers. These guys are idiots. The, the, yeah. the, the they're people, hicks right like that's the is that's that what the they thought is that they're like country the, bumpkins they're not they're even, like, but they're not even like exaggerated to that point no, where i wouldn't all. call them country bumpkins they're, they're they don't really like, have personalities no they don't at all. not at no, all but not the at all. Thing frank that whaley that is the only see, one i guess because because it's like what is luke wilson and and kate beckinsale super competent that they're able to overcome these idiots no the only thing that they have that the other people didn't have is they knew it was coming and were able to prepare yeah. for it 
And because they're losing them, the bad guys lose them. Like, well, where are they? They got to yeah. be somewhere. I'm like, this. There's two fucking buildings, <laughs> right? right? Some tunnel. They're either they, in they're the running. Woods. Ar- they're running around too much. Yeah, it's they like, just need to hang out. Come and on, wait. Like, where could they go? Uh, but yeah, they they're constantly losing them. It, it takes for so the bad guys are completely incompetent. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, hey, that's that's all right. So that that was the twist on it. So yeah, Sean, what did you think of Vacancy? Vacancy. Um, I think this movie is perfectly fine. Um, and I think that I mean there's nothing wrong with that. You can have, like you said, like right up the middle, like a good solid double. Um, just like you know, it's uh, it's uh, I'm going into baseball now. Okay. Uh, whereas so you I'm you like, could, that your metaphor you of choice. You can pick one. I'm going to go baseball. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice solid double up the middle. Um, it's not you know. Uh, you may not get any runners in on this one. I'm just going to dedicate myself oh, okay. to this. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Uh, no, it's, uh, again, a perfectly fine movie. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's what I thought about it when it came out. Um, because, uh, I mean, like we said, the star power is what draws to this. That was the big thing. Um, I went and saw it, and I was just like, okay, that's cool. Um, so it's like, it, it's uh, perfectly okay. Would I, would I recommend it? I don't know if I can tell you to give your time to it. When it's it is just a perfectly fine film, um. So mm, I don't know. This the characters do make decisions that I think are like pretty in line with just like all right, that feels about right as to if I think I was in the situation, what I would do. Um. But there's also some just also kind of some ridiculous stuff in this. Um. The killers are just kind of dumb, and if they really, if you really think about it, they could just be like, just stand up there at every exit and wait. There's only like two. And, uh, you know, I, I think they easily I think they could have killed these people a lot easier than this movie. Um, Do you think it's the hubris of like we have a tunnel system and we have we're, we're outgunning them? I think it's the hubris of like that... we've been doing this for a while yeah. and no one's escaped or gotten away yet. Mm-hmm. And so they're they're probably feeling very lax in their right. methods where they're just not like tight in their game mm-hmm. at that point. And so this is what happens. I feel like this is the first time things have gone wrong for them. Um, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think there's uh, more exceptional movies that you can watch besides this one. This one being just like baseline, pretty good. So oh, um, baseline. I think that's what I was looking. For. Is that what you're looking for? Baseline. baseline. It, it is really. It's just baseline, pretty good. Um, you go below this. You, you're like no. Yeah, you're, above, you're above it. it you're like, like Ooh, yeah. above average. So, so this is baseline. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm, it didn't do anything to go above that baseline. So I'm not going to recommend it. Um, I don't have too many problems with it, but it's just not quite enough for me to say you should take your time to watch this movie. So, you know, uh, it's not bad, but I'm still not going to recommend that you go out of your way to see it. So there it is. They can see. Michaela. So I first saw this movie uh, when I was working my first job ever at the local five screen movie theater. Ooh. This movie came out and uh, I would we, we would get breaks. And during our breaks, you could go sit in on any movie you want. And so I watched this in like 30 minute chunks <laughs> <laughs> until I saw the whole movie. And I remember like, the, I mean, I worked with weird people, but like they would go watch like like there was a really shitty historical drama we had for like three months straight. It ran, and I was like, I can't stand to watch that anymore. So I what would just go it? watch Amazing Grace. Ooh. It's about the writing of the song Amazing Grace. It's boring as oh, fuck, no. but old people loved it, so they just kept coming to see it, and we had it for three months. Oh boy, God, yeah. And in five screen theater, that's a lot of real that's estate a, to have yeah. for that long. Um. So that's how I originally watched it. This is my first time actually sitting down and watching it, not on 30-minute breaks at work. Um, But I I agree with a lot of the things you guys are saying, and like I do agree that it is like straight down the middle, but I don't know what more it could have done to push it any higher because it feels like it executed everything pretty well. So I don't know why it isn't better. You know, because like, all the characters behave exact. I mean, like, even though they're making smart decisions, mm-hmm. it's still kind of a cliche at this point. Like, because I kept expecting, like, you know, but a lot of horror movie movies out. I like are cliches, you know, like from, from this era, because this from era, any era. We expect something, you know, like they're going to break a cliche by somebody's going to do something yeah. unexpected or mm-hmm. like have a character trait that's like, that's weird putting yeah. that guy mm-hmm. in this situation. Yeah, we didn't break out of that in this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Like, like, cause it's it's really well executed in in most areas. I think so. I don't really know what it's missing to put it over the edge. Um, I I don't know. I 
I that image of like him putting in the the tape and like the snuff film coming on is like always stuck with me and always like really kind of just like made my stomach turn a little bit. Like just the way those like footage is shot in that gross, gross hotel room is just mm-hmm. like something like about horrible fluorescent light in a room like that and like horrible things happening under that light is just really gross. And so that's always stuck with me. And like home invasion stuff is always effective for me. And this is like home invasion layered with like surveillance and like the isolation of being trapped where no one knows you're there. Mm. Um, it's layering a lot of different things that I think I really like together. So I definitely think it's worth a watch. I, I agree. It's nothing like spectacular or out of the ordinary, but it's really good at what it does. So I think I think I would recommend it for that. All right. So that's Vacancy. Vacancy. <clears throat> A movie I didn't think we'd uh, get back to at any point. Well, when was the last time you thought about it before I mentioned it? Again, you know? it's been <laughs> yeah. years. 12 yes. years. It's yeah. been 12 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Holly. Holly, what are we watching tonight? Uh, I think... <laughs> or next gonna, week. I think we're going to watch a movie called... Uh, Hell Knight? Hell Knight. <laughs> we're watching Hell Knight. <laughs> Holly chose Hell Knight for next week. All right, so there you go. That's a uh, Linda Blair, nineteen eighty one. Eighty two, eighty one. I don't know if I've I um I may have seen the poster for this today randomly while searching through IMDb for something, but I don't know that I've know much about this movie. Yeah, right. I don't know anything about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 it's an eighty slasher. It play. seems like a pretty well. Uh, duh. Yeah. Imagine, <laughs> imagine that. Imagine that. Oh, oh, watching oh one really? Of those. Is that what it is? Yep. Hell Knight. That seems that's I was Hell I'm Knight. glad somebody grabbed that title because that seems like it's an obvious one. Yeah. Hell Knight. All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark.